There's so much to learn in Animal Crossing New Horizons, and in 2023 alone, millions of people have started playing the game for the very first time, with so many others returning too. Despite being over three years old at this point, there's always new things to learn and enjoy in New Horizons, so I've decided to make a video compiling 50 must-know tips and tricks that will help you with island life, whether you're new to the game or you've been playing for a while. These are videos I previously made throughout 2022 and 2023, so I thought before the year ends it'd be a good idea to compile them all into one single video for convenient viewing. Leave a like on the video if you're looking forward to these tips and tricks, and let's jump into this. First of all, you can use transparent patterns to prevent things from growing on the ground. This could be weeds, fossils appearing, flowers, you name it. This is such a useful thing, and the transparent patterns won't look ugly on the ground because they're transparent, you can't see them. For example, I don't like things growing behind my trees, it's really easy to lose things that happen to grow there, so I always put transparent patterns behind them. This could also really help you stop the infestation of flowers on your island, something that no one likes. I don't like digging up hundreds and hundreds of flowers, so I'm gonna put lots of these patterns down. Next, if you happen to be taking a boat ride with a famous Cap'n, then you can actually spam the B button so he'll stop singing. Now, don't get me wrong, I love his songs, but sometimes you just want to head to an island right away and his singing really interrupts you, so spam that B button and you can get there a lot quicker. Speaking of Cap'n Islands, you should definitely know that you won't be able to see certain types of Cap'n Islands until you've experienced the equivalent yourself in the game. Now if that doesn't make much sense, for example, you can visit a Kappen Island that will be based around Fall. If you haven't yet seen Fall on your current gameplay, you haven't gotten to Fall yet, then you definitely need to do that before you can get that version of a Kappen Island. It's basically set up this way so someone who has only just started playing and is in the spring season can't suddenly start getting rarer items from later on in the year, they have to wait. Now speaking of spamming the B button like you could with Kappen, you can spam the A button to speed up crafting. Crafting can be quite a slow process sometimes, and although we don't have bulk crafting in the game, which is such a shame in my opinion, it can be really useful to do this to speed things up just so you don't spend too much time in the crafting menus. If you like the coconut trees, then this is a tip for you. You can use the terraforming tool to put sand down on the ground so that you can grow coconut trees anywhere. As long as sand is underneath them, they will grow. They can't grow on regular grass, but you can put down the sand path on top of grass, and then you can grow coconut trees. This is a must-know trick for anyone who has a tropical-themed island, but it can just be really useful to have coconut trees in other places, and makes the scenery of your island a lot more varied, so this is a trick that I like quite a lot. Speaking of palm trees, did you know that wasps will never nest in palm trees? So if you want to get some wood, this can be a good place to start. You won't have to worry about running for your life from those terrifying wasps because they just won't come out of coconut trees. I also saw that a lot of people didn't even realize you could get wood from coconut trees, so this is another tip that you might find kind of useful. Now this one might seem obvious to a lot of people, but it's one of the most common things I see that people wish they'd known sooner. You can actually press L to speed up dialogue rather than press B. Now if you do want to press B, that's fine, but sometimes you might find yourself saying no to things or skipping certain dialogue that you didn't want to, whereas L won't act like the B button getting rid of menus. It will simply just act as a way of speeding up dialogue, which is really useful because, let's be honest, some of these characters do talk a little bit too much. I'm looking at you, Orville. Here's a fun little one. Did you know that you can place small types of items on top of the castle towers? Now these have to be the types of items that only take up one single square. If they're any bigger than that, you will not be able to put them on top. But you could do all kinds of cool things, like having a little gyroid act as a watch for the castle tower. So I definitely recommend doing this if you do use any of the castle items on your island. They're so cool, come on, you've got to use some of them. Depending on what type of wallpaper you have inside your house, you can actually close and open the curtains. This also applies to the blinds too. If you want a little bit more privacy because the sun is filling up your room during the day and you want some more ambient lighting, then it could be a good idea to close the curtains. Otherwise, this is more just kind of a fun little detail that not a lot of people seem to know about. When you're starting up Animal Crossing New Horizons and you're planning out your island, it can be a really good idea to put all of the buildings that you place down onto the beach. This means they won't get in the way of progress on the main island and you won't have to spend a ton of bells later on to move them all around. I highly recommend doing this especially if you're going to flatten your island, you don't want those buildings getting in the way. More and more people have been restarting or just starting the game in general lately, so this could be really useful to know. Of course, sadly, you can't do it with things like the resident services building or the airport. I'm so sad that you can't move those about. 
If you are starting up, then you might need a good way to get a lot of bells without too much effort, and a really simple way of doing so is going after sea creatures. Get yourself a wetsuit, head into the ocean, and just catch tons of sea creatures. If you can fill up your pockets all the way, then you should get a ton of bells. It's a really lucrative way of doing so. And it takes a lot less time than some of the other methods do, like catching bugs or going after fish, so this could be a really good way for starters to make a lot of bells at once. When you get the hang of it though, turnips are probably the best way overall. Speaking of turnips, did you know that you can actually eat 10 turnips at once to get a bunch of energy without having to eat food one after the other? This is a really useful way of getting a lot of energy if you want to dig up trees or smash some rocks. Although I do recommend in general just cooking instead, you don't want to waste your turnips by eating them, so instead cook some food and that should give you energy pretty fast as well. Now if you have eaten too much food, did you know that you can actually sit on the toilet to get rid of excess food that you have? This can be helpful if you don't want to smash any rocks by accident but you still want the materials or bells from them. So yes, it's true, you literally can poop in Animal Crossing New Horizons, which is something I never really expected you'd be able to do honestly. Did you also know that you can use Mario pipes to go inside of buildings? These won't just teleport you around the island, you could put one of them inside of a house and then it'll take you inside of a building which can be a really great way to get there super fast. As far as I'm aware though, this only works with your own house, sadly it doesn't work with things like the shop, I wish it did but of course you can't place items down in them, so generally anyway you can't place items yourself, it won't really work. Heading over to Harvey's Island, Katrina's luck will only activate if you actually talk to her. If you didn't know, you have luck every single day and Katrina needs to be the one to activate this. You could get good luck where you'll find yourself getting a ton of bells or just good luck with your residents, but you could also get bad luck and start tripping up. So if you do or do not want to activate luck that day, you'll have to decide whether you want to talk to Katrina or not. Personally though, I definitely think you should start off every single day by talking to Katrina because honestly, the good luck heavily outweighs the bad luck. You might have seen that Red sets up his own store on Harvey's Island as well, and if you're sick of seeing the same paintings from him every day, that's because really you need to start buying them. When you buy a painting from him, whether it's real or fake, he will replace it with another the next day. So if you want to change out his inventory, then I recommend you do that. You may end up having to buy some fake paintings sometimes, but if you're really searching for that real art and you want to complete your museum quick, then I definitely recommend you purchase some stuff from him. Sahara is interesting because they're actually more expensive at Harvey's Island and they won't give you tickets, so it might be worth just spending more of your bells on Sahara when they come to visit your actual island. But Sahara might actually have different stock here, so that could be really useful too. If you head into resident services, then you can actually find certain exclusive items in the recycling bin. For example, this is where you can find the sloppy set of furniture which is a really cool exclusive type of furniture for all of your favourite lazy villagers. Or just your own house too, honestly it's one of my favourite furniture sets in the entire game. Whilst you're here in resident services, have you set up an ordinance? Because there's one that you might actually not want to use. This is the beautiful town ordinance and honestly it could potentially ruin your town with flowers. The beautiful ordinance will make flowers grow and spread a lot quicker than they would have without it. So if this is already a problem on your island, then it could potentially make things much, much worse. So I would definitely be careful about having this ordinance if that is an issue that you've been struggling with. Whilst you're here, if you have Happy in Paradise, you can talk to Isabel and she'll actually reset your villager's home to how it was at the very start. So if you've already made changes to yourself that you didn't like and you want to revert, or perhaps your villager had a more basic home and you wanted their normal default home, then you can simply reset it and it'll look brand new. Starting us off, Paula Tear shared, you cannot move the city hall, airport, or the river entry points. Have that in mind when choosing your island map. So that is 100% correct. When you choose your map, there are certain things that you are completely stuck with throughout your entire time playing that you physically cannot change no matter what you do. The position of your resident services, the airport and the color of your airport as well. Then we have natural features like the river mouths, the secret beach, the location of your dock, and even the giant grey rocks around your beach as well. So you'll definitely want to choose carefully when starting up a new file. Although the game does allow us to change the position of most of the buildings, especially all of the ones that we actually place down ourselves, which is really great, there are definitely some limitations which are pretty frustrating, and you will have to work around these unfortunately. So it might not be worth choosing a map that has a resident services incredibly close to the airport for example as it could be a lot harder to design, although there are plenty of good ideas out there too. 
Megaroni says, I wish I had known to keep an eye on which things you can order once they've catalogued and which things you can't. For example, Sahara's rugs can be ordered, but her flooring and wallpaper cannot be. There are some pretty rad seasonal nook shopping items that you can only get for a few days out of the year. So yes, this is true. Some of the items in the game definitely cannot be ordered, and you can actually see this through your catalogue by using the toggle to take out items which are unorderable. These can be a variety of different things, from materials that you'd collect around the island to special photos your villagers give you and more. And yes, there are definitely lots of seasonal nook shopping items which are only available for a limited amount of time throughout the year. So if you don't get them, naturally you would have to wait an entire year to get them again. It's always worth checking the Nook Shopping app, or if you just have the terminal in Resident Services, then checking that instead. It is worth noting though that most of the items you see in Nook's Cranny itself can be ordered at any time from your catalog, which is really useful. So if you only have one of an item and you really want to get your hands on more, it's definitely worth checking through. Bumble Honey says that villagers have favorite colors, styles, food, slash handheld items, and hobbies. Never knew that Sasha was the only male villager with a fashion hobby until reading his profile on Nookopedia and found out nearly all of my villagers have the education hobby. No wonder my town life felt a bit dull. Getting some musical, play, and fashion hobbied villagers puts more life in the background and contrast to my education nerds. So honestly, I kind of knew about some of this, but I had no idea that it affected what your villagers actually did around the island so much until I read this comment, which is really cool. I definitely recommend using Nookopedia like they mentioned for finding out more information about your villagers and their hobbies and such. It's such a useful resource this sort of thing. So I'm definitely going to be looking up to see which hobbies my villagers have. I'm really curious. I know a lot of people really enjoy the little activities that our villagers do around the island. So this could be a really great way of getting to know them better. Katie Glabe says, your island probably won't end up looking like the ones on YouTube and Instagram and that's okay. And this is definitely a very valid point. This isn't necessarily a gameplay tip itself, but I definitely think it's something to keep in mind. I do often see comments from people bringing down their own islands and such because they don't look like another one they've seen. But honestly, every island is different and that's a good thing. If they all look the same, it would be really boring. I think as long as you've given your island your own personal touch, then it's definitely going to look great. I still get comments from people telling me that my island looks like a maze and they would hate to play in it, but the beautiful thing is it's my island and I've designed it exactly how I like and I recommend that everyone else does the same. Super Tita 64 says that golden tools could be broken still, so if you've played old Animal Crossing games and not New Horizons yet, maybe you've only just started with this version of Animal Crossing, you might remember that golden tools used to be completely invincible. Well sadly this is not the case in Animal Crossing New Horizons, they definitely can break. They do have a lot more durability than other tools which is useful, but honestly it does feel like a huge downgrade to the previous Animal Crossing games, so be careful with your golden tools, because once they break you will have to craft another one. Ali Langdon says that garbage cans actually work. I had no idea until I went to move one of them and it asked what items I wanted to get rid of. So yes, if you have any items in your pockets that you just can't be bothered to sell to Nook's Cranny and you want to discard of immediately, then you can use any rubbish can around your island to get rid of them. For example, if you have something like fake art that was given to you by Red or another villager, or maybe you have some spoiled turnip, or just anything else that has extended its welcome in your inventory, you can get rid of it immediately. This is definitely a really useful one to know, and I feel like there's a lot of people who don't realize that these items actually have their own special functionality as well, so I highly recommend using them like this. Fire the Dragon says to never leave your island too long without containing the flowers with a custom design or stone slash brick path. Another really great tip here, flowers can easily take over your island, especially if you have the beautiful town ordinance and there's lots of rain happening. So definitely make sure you contain those flowers because they will spread and take over everything and it'll be quite a pain to get rid of them once they have. Thankfully you can get rid of flowers, but there's no automatic way of doing this. You'll have to dig them up one by one, you can't even pick them up, so it can be a really long and arduous process. This is personally why I do not choose the beautiful ordnance on my island, because I really don't want it infested with flowers. Corbin Crossing says, when you catch a fish and it says yes, that means it's new and you've never caught it before. If you're still trying to complete your Critopedia and finish the museum, then this is something really helpful to know. It can be really hard to keep track of all the bugs, fish, and sea creatures that the game has, so I definitely find this one to be really useful. Rotten Rat says catchphrases spread. This is something that I learned the hard way in Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've given my villagers some fairly stupid catchphrases over the years, and they still say them to this day because they've spread from villager to villager. 
As your villagers interact with each other and time goes by, these catchphrases will spread like wildfire, so it's definitely a good idea to be careful about what catchphrases you're giving to them. Keep in mind that if another player decides to come visit your island, they could see these catchphrases that your villagers are saying, even if you didn't give it to a certain one. Honestly, I like to keep them with their normal standard catchphrases, but that can be quite hard to do, especially when they ask you for a new one. Klo Zen Time says, Turnips go bad if you time travel. So this is one of the main and kind of only consequences of time traveling in Animal Crossing New Horizons, your turnips will go bad. The game obviously doesn't want you manipulating the stalk market, so if you time travel, they will go bad. But I believe it's only if you time travel backwards. Of course, if you time travel past their expiry date, then they're definitely going to go rotten. But trying to go backwards to a day where you had a much better selling price for your turnips, that's just not gonna fly with Nintendo and they will completely rot, so keep that in mind before you waste tons of your bells. Now whilst many assume that you might just need to use your ladder tool or even ladder setup kits to traverse the cliffs around your island, there is actually another way that is much more cost effective and honestly I think looks great, and that's actually using your vines as ladders. Now you can get vines from certain mystery Kappen islands, or you can get them from Happy and Paradise where they're actually in complete abundance. You'll find so many there, I mean you'll be literally swamped in vines. Leave a like on the video if you think vines are the best, and if not, leave a like anyways because I really appreciate it. And this is really great because not only does it look super cool, it has a really great functional purpose, and you'll use much less materials or cash in case you wanted to create an incline when you're using these vines instead. Of course, inclines still have their uses because villagers won't be able to get up the cliffs, I believe, if you don't have any of those. And just in general, it's great to have them as a thing around your island, but I still recommend using a lot of these vines too. After all, there's only so many inclines you can put on your island, so having this as an option to make easy traversal of the cliffs is really great. And like I said, if you can access a cap and island, or even better, you have the Happy and Paradise DLC, you'll be able to get a lot of these. And as I've said, aesthetically, these are one of my favorite items in the whole game. If you have a jungle core island or a swamp core island, then this could be the right type of item for you to use. Now here's a little trick that I learned about wasps in case you want to avoid them. It seems like wasps will actually only spawn on non-fruit trees. Now whilst there are benefits to actually shaking trees and getting wasps, like unlocking the recipe for medicine, I believe there's also some Nookmar rewards for getting stung by wasps and then passing out, a lot of us just want to avoid them, especially if we've already unlocked all of that and we don't need to get a wasp for our Critopedia. So knowing which types of trees they can spawn in on definitely helps you avoid them. Whilst I wouldn't completely advise avoiding all non-fruit trees, if you really aren't feeling like dealing with wasps that particular day, then you could avoid shaking them. But one reason that you might want to shake them is the fact that two furniture trees will spawn around your island every day. So my next tip, which kind of contradicts the last one, is to make sure you get these two pieces of furniture by shaking ordinary trees. Now as far as I'm aware, you cannot get this furniture item from your fruit trees. I believe they can only drop from the regular hardwood and cedar trees. So if you want to maximize the amount of items you can find in a day and get some really cool random items from a tree, which is still one of the funniest mechanics in Animal Crossing to be honestly that a sofa can just be hiding up in a tree then you should consider that at least from your island, you can get two of these per day. I believe that if you go visit a mystery tour island, you might be able to get even more, but I'm just referring specifically to our own islands when mentioning this tip. Now, in one of my last tips and tricks videos, I mentioned a tip where you can actually customize your tools in order to reset their durability. However, now I want to mention in this video that that's something you might not actually want to do, as you will gain nook miles for breaking your tools. Of course, you'll also gain Nook Miles for crafting new tools as well. So ultimately, whilst it might be a good idea to stop your tools from completely breaking, especially if you're low on bells or resources, generally, I would say it's actually probably for the best for you to break them, given how the Nook Mile rewards are set up. Now, if you've already completed all of these like I have, then you don't need to worry about this at all, and you can simply go ahead and customize them to reset the durability, which I do think is an incredibly useful tip to know. But if you're still trying to progress through these, then I would highly recommend that you actually do let a lot of them break, so you can craft more, let those break, and the cycle goes on and on. Yes, it is a bit frustrating, but those Nookmar rewards can definitely be worth getting, so this is what I would recommend. 
If you have the pipe item, which was a part of the Mario and Animal Crossing collaboration a few years back, then you'll know that you can use it to teleport around your island. However, a tip that you might not have known is you can actually use it to teleport indoors, which is such a cool little secret. I've seen some people use this on their dream islands to teleport people to secret little rooms to really create a nice scene. Or if you just need quick access to your house at any point, then you could put a pipe inside of your home and then put one outdoors somewhere convenient and you'll be able to teleport directly to your home, which is really, really useful. Sadly, this does not work for villager homes. There's no way of putting a pipe in there and then teleporting to it. Whilst you can put a pipe in there, sadly, it doesn't functionally work like that. This will work for any player home, so that can be really useful to know about. Here's a useful tip if you have Happy Home Paradise DLC. If you head into the hospital which you've built on a Monday, you might actually see Joan and she will give you some free turnips. Now in case you didn't play the older games, Joan is actually Daisy May's grandmother. She's the original turnip seller around the towns and islands of Animal Crossing, but she retired in this game. Thankfully though, while she's getting her checkup at the hospital, you can actually get some free turnips from her which is really cool. Whilst it's honestly not a ton, it's a really cool throwback to the past Animal Crossing games, and it's still something that can be really useful. It's not like she's just giving you one bells or something like that. You could add these turnips to the pile of ones you've already got, and just make a little bit of extra profit, which can be really helpful, especially if you are low on bells in the game, like I often am sadly. And I think it's just a good idea to know where some of the secret and special characters are in Animal Crossing New Horizons, because there's actually quite a few. Now, this next one might seem obvious, but read the loading screen tips. Now, if you've started up the game since the huge 2.0 update in November 2021, Tom Nook would have actually given you this Nook 101 advice app on your phone, which will give you a ton of useful tips which you can check for your Nook phone. However, they also appear in the loading screens of the game too. And whilst these tips and tricks videos can definitely help out a lot, the tips actually in the game can be really useful too and help you learn about things you had no idea about. This app is probably one of the most overlooked in the entire game, but it can be so, so helpful. Even if you're a veteran player, it has some stuff that can be super useful to know. Now, if you didn't actually get this from Tom Nook, I believe you can head into Resident Services and go to the Nook Stop machine and exchange some of your Nook miles for this app on your Nook phone. So yeah, definitely make sure you've unlocked this one because it has some great advice for new players and even some helpful tips for veteran players as well. Now one of the most questions I've gotten on this channel about Animal Crossing New Horizons is how I've unlocked this app, the Nook Mile Shopping app on my Nook phone, whereas a lot of other people have to go to the Nook Shop machine in Resident Services and access Nook Shopping and their catalogue through there. Well to unlock it you actually need to buy 100 items from your catalogue and then you will unlock it as an app for your phone. So it's fairly simple, but of course it will cost you some bells and maybe take a little bit of time, given that you can only order so many things per day. But I definitely think this is something that is worth doing because having this app just on your Nook phone at any time is incredibly convenient and one of my favorite things in the game. I find myself using the catalog and the Nook shopping seasonal tab all of the time to get special items so I don't miss anything. Whereas when I had to check it in resident services, I definitely didn't have as much motivation to do so. So yeah, this can be really helpful to know. And like I said, I hope this answers the question for the hundreds of people who've asked about it, which I can totally understand because this is a really cool app and one of the must haves on your Nook phone. Next, there's actually a lot of locations in the game where you can get the DIY recipe bottles. You probably know that you can get one from your beach every single day. I'm sure that's something you've already been doing, but there are other locations too. For example, you can get lots more by visiting Mystery Tour Islands using your Nook Mile tickets at the airport. As far as I'm aware, these typically just contain the same sorts of things that you would get from the recipe bottle on your own beach. Since the 2.0 update, you can actually get them from Kappen Islands too, and these ones are a little bit more special because they can obtain special DIY recipes related to the season. You might visit a Kappen Island that is set in winter for example, so you might get some Christmas or holiday themed DIY recipes. And typically, I've seen a lot of the DIY recipe bottles on Kappen's beaches actually being the food ones. And you can tell right away because they will look slightly different. 
You can also get a recipe bottle from the beach in Happy Home Paradise if you've purchased the DLC, and this one can contain some special DLC exclusive items, such as some of the ruin or vine furniture, or even the glowing moss furniture too. So if you want to maximize how many DIY recipes you're getting per day, then I would highly consider remembering this list of locations because it's a really important thing to know. And it will certainly add up if you're visiting all four of these each and every day. I actually don't really have many more DIY recipe bottles to collect now at this point, despite there being hundreds and hundreds of recipes in the game. So yeah, I definitely recommend using this tip because that's exactly how I did it. Although the Cap and Island and Happy and Paradise methods haven't been in the game since the very start, so if you took a break for a long time, you might not have actually known about those. Now one of the biggest complaints I see about Animal Crossing New Horizons is when villagers barge into your home uninvited. And yes, this definitely can be very frustrating, but here's a little tip that you might not know about, or at least I had no idea about myself. Now, it seems like some people assume that the only way to get rid of your villagers when they're visiting your home is to wait for them to invite themselves out, or at least that's the way of doing it so they won't be too upset. And whilst that is very considerate of you, there is a much faster way of kicking them out, and that's simply heading out the door. When you head out of the door, you won't actually leave your home, you'll just be showing them out. So you won't have to worry about leaving your house and then coming back in again, say you were in the middle of decorating or something. Instead, it will just invite them out and not kick you out of your own home. I did actually make a pretty viral YouTube short about how you can put cockroaches in your house by time traveling and then villagers will immediately leave because they find it so disgusting. But honestly, this tip is probably a lot easier, so I would recommend utilizing this one instead. Although there are definitely benefits to villagers visiting your home, as you can get some exclusive dialogue from them, I believe, if they visit. They might comment about certain things that you've put in your house, and I know a lot of you like seeing special dialogue from your villagers, so it might actually be a good idea to put up with them when they're inviting themselves in, just so you can get that special dialogue from them. Unless you are trying to decorate that it is, because then you will have to kick them out, because for some reason, the game doesn't let us do that when we have company over. I guess it's our character being really polite. If you're not sure whether you've donated something to Blavers already or not, you can first of all, when you're catching something, see if the yes comes up, but also you could actually check your Critopedia to see if there is a stamp by the thing that you want to donate. If that museum stamp is there, then you'll know you've already donated it and you don't have to waste your time talking to Blavers. No offense, Blavers, but you know, you do kind of go on and on a bit sometimes. I guess that's why he's called Blavers. I had never really thought about that before. Next, did you know that you can actually move your mailbox wherever you want? You'd be surprised how many people don't know about this. You can actually pick up your mailbox and put it anywhere on the island. Now personally, I do think it's best to have it by your house so that it's nice and convenient. You can check your mailbox right as you load up the game. But if you want it somewhere else for aesthetic reasons or whatever other purpose you might have, then you could definitely make good use out of moving your mailbox to somewhere else on the island. Of course, you can't just pick up your house itself and move it wherever you want. You'd have to go to resident services and sort that out. So I understand why a lot of people thought that the mailbox was just kind of a part of it and it wouldn't be movable. But nope, it is its own separate item and you can put it somewhere else. New Horizons was actually the first time we've ever been able to do this in an Animal Crossing game. So I think it's a really, really cool feature. For number three, crops are one of the absolute best ways to make bells in the game without really a need for luck. In some of my other videos, we've mentioned other ways to make bells, like donating sea creatures and stuff, which is definitely good, but crops can be fantastic as well. As you progress in the game quite a bit and you manage to get a lot of crops on your island, something I highly recommend you do because you can turn them into meals, and of course you get Nookmar rewards for doing all that kind of stuff too, they can also be a great source of bells in the game. If you water them every single day as they're growing, then you'll get the maximum of three per crop. So you'll really be maximizing how many bells you can get out of this. Leaf will of course sell them on Harvey's Island if you've managed to unlock his store over there, or you can just wait until he comes and visits you. I believe you could also steal some crops from Cap and Islands too. That's another way of getting them. So yeah, I highly recommend populating your island with crops as soon as you can. Another thing people don't seem to know that I'm going to include in this same tip is the fact that you can actually just replant your crops that you've already harvested. You don't need the starts to get new crops. So let's say you've already grown a pumpkin, you can just plant that pumpkin back in the ground and it will act like a start. I honestly love all the crops and I highly recommend filling your island with them. Next, if you have the Happy on Paradise DLC, then this tip is for you. Now, whilst the unlock requirements are a little bit foggy, I believe once you've spent enough in the shop in the Happy on Paradise planning building, you'll actually be able to unlock Wardell's special shop. 
and this has to be the best shop in the entire game. It'll basically give you every single item that you've used within a Happy Home Paradise build. And that's amongst a ton of other cool things too. Now whilst you can't find items in here that you craft yourself, you can get so, so many different ones, and honestly some of the best items in the game. I honestly think that the DLC is genuinely worth purchasing for this feature alone, it is really crazy. Whether you love to design your island or you just want to collect every type of item, then this shop is a must have. I made a YouTube short about this one recently and it shocked me just how many people had no idea that this shop existed at all. It completely blew their minds that this was in the game, so I just had to include this one in a video. So so many of you commented this one, so thank you for mentioning it. It's a really important one to know. Of course, it is a shame that it does require the DLC, but I highly think it's worth it if you do have a way of getting it. Speaking of the DLC, the DLC has a lot more to it than most people expect. It isn't just about decorating. There are a ton of different unlocks that you can get for it aside from Wardell's shop. For example, there are special shops that you can unlock there where you can purchase extra clothing per day. You can also get an extra DIY recipe bottle from the beach. You can get special glowing moss from the cliffs and vines to bring back to your island. You can get a cooking recipe almost every day from the chef of the restaurant. There are so many different unlocks and special things that you can get just by having the DLC and making progress. So yeah, if you are able to get it, I really do recommend it. Back to our own island, if you decide to wish upon a star on your own, then you can get up to 20 star fragments. So even if you wished upon 100 stars, the maximum that you'll get on your beach the next day will only be 20. However, there is a caveat to this, because if there's another player on your island wishing for stars too, for every 5 wishes that they make on your island, you can get another 20 star fragments as well. That means that in total, you can get up to a maximum of 40 star fragments per wishing session. Now, you'll probably still want to do a lot of wishing regardless of how many you get in the end, because there are Nook Mile rewards for doing so, and there's some decently high numbers, so I still recommend doing it anyways. But if you've already done that and you just want to get the maximum amount of star fragments, then I highly recommend inviting over a friend so you can get even more, because of course, they too will get the star fragments on their beach the next day also. It's really a win-win situation for everyone, and honestly, who doesn't love wishing on stars? Speaking of meteor showers, of course Celeste plays a big part in these, and you can often find her wandering around your island during these, and she'll actually give you a special DIY recipe for some of the Zodiac items in the game. Now, if you want to know if Celeste is actually going to visit your island that particular day, because she also visits some days where there aren't the proper meteor showers too, then what you can do is actually head into the roost between 5 to 7 p.m. and see if she's sitting down at the bar. In the video clip I'm showing you, she's actually just sitting down at the tables, that's because I invited her by an amiibo. I couldn't get lucky enough to get her in the actual roost at the bar. But yes, if she's up at the bar itself where Brewster is, then that means she will be visiting your island that day. Just keep it in mind that you've got between 5 and 7 to do this. Next, dropped not placed items that don't appear naturally around your island will negatively impact your 5 star rating, and 15 or more will give your island the messy classification. This includes things like drop tools or others like the heart crystals. Whilst they might look pretty for decoration, if you're trying to get that 5 star island, you probably don't want to have too many of these around as they will negatively impact your island. Now if you can actually display them as items themselves, it's a different story. Moving on, if you want to get every type of bug in the game, then it's highly recommended that you keep stumps around your island. A lot of people feel like they have to dig these up right away because they aren't always the most aesthetically pleasing, but nope, you really want to keep those stumps. There are certain bugs that will only spawn through them, so if you're missing something and you just can't figure out why you can't get it, then I would definitely recommend having lots of stumps around. The more that you've got, of course, the more chance that you might end up finding something. So really, you should keep some of those stumps around. Speaking of bugs and fish and catching critters, you can actually customize your tools to reset their usage. If a tool is about to break after a certain amount of uses, and it doesn't matter what tool this is, as long as you can customize it using your crafting bench, you'll actually reset its usage. You can basically just keep doing this to get unbreakable tools, although you will need to keep track of how many uses it had, and of course have those customizable kits. Still, a really useful tip if you're sick of your tools breaking. Now we're moving away from the game to go to the Nook Link app, which is a part of the Nintendo Switch Online app that you can download for your smartphone. 
This app is directly connected to Animal Crossing Horizons and a lot of people don't know about it, but it's full of all kinds of really great features that will help improve your gameplay. There's stuff here like special unlocks that you can get using the currency in the app and bring them over to your game. There's a keyboard that you can use to directly type to your friends in the game when you're playing online. And there's the amazing island newsletter which will let you know about all kinds of stuff going on around your island, as well as giving you a turnip tracker which is probably one of the most underrated features that exists. If you don't have this downloaded then you should definitely get it as soon as you possibly can, it is a must for Animal Crossing New Horizons players. Back to Happy on Paradise, although you actually do this one for your island, once you've completed 30 homes within the DLC, you'll actually be able to change your villager house exteriors and interiors on your own island. So many people still don't know about this one, but it is probably one of the best unlocks that you can get in the entire game. If you really don't like how your villager houses look because they just don't match with your island's vibe, then you can actually change them up through resident services by talking to Tom Nook, which is such a great feature, honestly, I absolutely love it. Now this next one probably will happen to you fairly on in the game, but I still think it's really important to know about. Did you know that your first camper on your island ever will always be a smug villager, and you're actually forced to take them? This is kind of the game's way of having a tutorial for the campsite, it teaches you about inviting a villager and such, and yeah, sadly, whoever your first camper is, no matter who they are, you will have to invite them. And like I said, no matter what, they will always be a smug villager. I often notice when I'm starting up a new file and maybe I'm streaming it or something, people assume that any villager type could be your first camper, but nope, it will always be smug. That does mean you could get someone really cool like Raymond or Marshall, but then again, you might also get someone like Chop, so it's a very double-edged sword, sadly. Now, again, this could really happen to you at any point in the game, but I still think it's one worth mentioning. If you see a balloon floating around your island, you need to be really careful about where you pop it. If your island is populated with weeds and lots of different flowers, or you've got lots of rivers and water features around, then be careful where you pop it, because if it lands somewhere where the ground isn't a clear space, it will actually despawn and disappear, which is quite funny honestly, your character will react to this, and I do think you even get some kind of Nookmar reward for it, although correct me if I'm wrong on that, so it can be fun to do sometimes, but if you want to get those balloon rewards, which you know, could contain things like fairly rare DIY recipes and such, or a lot of bells, then you probably don't want to lose them over the water, so it's recommended that you try and find a clear space to pop them with your slingshot. Good luck with those balloons. Finally, did you know that you can have up to 5 wasp nests on your island at any given time? And if you know where they are, you can actually avoid these trees specifically. All you really need to do is go around finding the trees that have the wasp in them, shake them, and once the wasp falls out, you just reset your game, grab that tree from wherever it was, and put it somewhere that you know about. You can do this 5 times over to find all of the wasp trees, and then put them somewhere where you know they are so you won't get stung if that's something you're worried about. Although personally, I do think it can actually be worth getting stung sometimes, because either you could try and catch the wasp and sell it for a lot of bells, or you could get that wasp's nest as well which sells for a decent amount and then you can use to get medicine too. So there's definitely reasons to have wasps around your island, but if you really are just sick of them and want to avoid them, then this is a trick that you could use to avoid them completely. Well, we're at the end, I hope you managed to learn something new that you'll find useful with your island life. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, if you made it to the end, make sure to comment Bob's Gang down below so I know you did. Leave any of your tips and tricks in the comments section too, and make sure to subscribe for more Animal Crossing content.